The floors are insane. The tile is a dramatic statement. That fluted fireplace facade is so gorgeous. I can do the stools, the area rug is amazing, the light fixtures. No. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lindsay Thurston. I'm an interior stylist and teacher, and I make videos about interior design so we can learn and style our homes together. In today's video, we're diving back into my home review series by taking a little look around into the celebrity home of Goop founder, Academy Award winner, Gwyneth Paltrow. This home is, I'm sure, going to be very interesting. I just saw the first couple seconds while I was setting up for this this video and I'm already very intrigued and I can't wait to hear if you love it, hate it, or find any inspiration inside. Let's get right into it. Hi AD, welcome to our home. Oh wow, that's some bold wallpaper. Ladder in the kitchen. A lot of custom furniture. Looks like some sort of spa space. So this is the entryway here. We built this from the ground up. It was quite an undertaking. I think having spent so much time as an expat in Europe and really falling in love with Georgian proportions and those kind of details, I, I really wanted the entryway to feel like its own special room. It definitely has a lot of European influence. It feels very French inspired to me with the Harlequin floor pattern, the applique wall molding, big iron French doors out the back, the marble or stone facade on the fireplace. This is absolutely gorgeous, classic design in my opinion. And so with the architects, we conceived of having a fireplace, which is something you see a lot in Europe in an entryway and just gives Very minimal really nice on the styling as well. Welcome as you come in. I really like the mix of having the things that are sort of systemic to the house. They're more traditional. We have reclaimed fireplaces and old floors. And then I think it gives sort of leeway to have a more contemporary temporary like mixed experience with the furnishings. I feel like any time that you can use reclaimed furnishings or materials in your home, you're going to get a more lived in timeless vibe. And then there's also some of these artistic, rustic accessories, plant stands, very intriguing. I love this massive plant in the corner. Uh, I can't wait to see what comes next. Wallpaper, applique. This is one of my favorite little rooms of the house, the powder room. It's got all of this hand done antiqued mirror and hand painted oh, wallpaper. Oh wow, it's hand got a reclaimed painted wallpaper. Sink. It's got tons of different textures and metal. I like shapes. the sort of antique looking glass. It reminds me of a makeover that Lone Fox Drew Scott did recently. I'll link that down below where he did a DIY marble, not marble. Oh, come on, Lindsay. Mercury glass. <laughs> I'll link that video down below in case you want this look on a budget very intriguing and comes out very beautiful i love it it makes me feel very grown up when i pee in here <laughs> we all want to feel like grown-ups when we spend a lot of money in our homes <laughs> so this is the dining room here i enlisted my friend bridget to help me furnish the house she's been it's one of my best friends for 20 space. years and i was trying to do it by myself the yeah. wallpaper is so dreamy and hazy um, this table and chairs set is wow. It's kind of mid-century, it's kind of postmodern. I love the base, the sort of cone-shaped base of these chairs. I haven't seen anything like that in a while. I, you guys know me, I love anything unexpected in a home and obviously celebrities have a lot of money to put into their places so they can find these one-of-a-kind vintage pieces or create custom furniture. But this dining table, it's like milky soft stone with this really interesting detailing. Oh my gosh, it's wow. Wow. This beautiful table. This came from France, a beautiful furniture gallery called Colco's. So many beautiful things come from France. And then Bridget found these really cool contemporary chairs and this chandelier, which I can't decide if it looks like a grasshopper or lily pads or... The softness of this space, you know, even they didn't go for a bold modern light fixture that we've looked at in a lot of other homes with brass or black finishing on the hardware. This 
this particular piece is so calm. It's sort of this blonde wood or some, I'm not sure what material. And then these little globe lights, that's a really beautiful light fixture. I don't know that it would work in a lot of spaces, but it definitely works in here. And I'm loving this collection of blue and white pottery. So this peekaboo through into, I'm assuming is the kitchen and breakfast nook. Ooh, let's go in there. There's some friction and then we landed on it being pretty cool and fabulous. I think it's pretty cool and fabulous. That's what I love about it is the pearls. I think they're so beautiful and unique. There's something also a bit Star Trek about <laughs> it, but I've grown to really love it. It sounds like we had to talk her into that one. And again, we have a reclaimed fireplace here from Chateau Domingue and then this wallpaper is so amazing. It's hand painted by these artists wow. in Los Angeles. It's called MJ Atelier, and they, they also made the powder room wallpaper. The wallpaper really grounds the room in kind of a more traditional feel. And then again, we have some super contemporary items mixed in. This stonework, though, is pretty impressive. I would love to know where she sourced these fireplace facades because they, she said something about a chateau. I, I don't know obviously they have a lot of history and detail and texture they just to, to me it's the fireplace that makes the whole room and i happen. think it strikes the right balance i mean the kitchen's right there so we have our informal there but it's also nice to just kind of gather around here with the kids and you can spill pasta and wine and it just wipes right off so this is the kitchen i love it so much the heart the floors are insane the tile is a dramatic statement. That fluted fireplace facade is so gorgeous. And they had done my apartment in New York City, which I don't have anymore. I love the hidden appliances. Love the paneling on this huge refrigerator and freezer unit. Also the dishwasher you will notice is totally hidden. There's no exposed microwave. All of these things are sort of camouflaged by cabinetry covers and i highly recommend that really at any price point you can look into that and find something that's going to make your kitchen feel a little bit more part of the home versus a separate utilitarian space if you like obvious appliances that big bold chrome or stainless look in your kitchen that's totally great but i really love this trend this shift into more hidden downplayed appliances my next question is she's got this massive kitchen huge island but look through the walkthrough area there's another kitchen does she have two kitchens side by side i'm confused is this like her faux kitchen for filming cooking and then she has another secret kitchen where the chefs create things for her i'm assuming uh that's a, that's luxurious I wanted to pull in some elements love the hardware the that they had done for, for me it's a lot of white i've said that on this channel a lot but the countertop does break it up be in the middle of the room because i cook so much and i spent so much of my time facing the wall and my kids would be in the room so when it's like this you, you have the opportunity to cook and chat with people that's definitely a unique design if you cook a lot and you are with your family a lot and you want to give them a little bit more attention figuring out a way to lay out the kitchen in a way that has you open to the rest of the space is a great idea to have a wood burning fireplace in your kitchen a fireplace in the kitchen is such a beautiful luxury and this one is gorgeous burning fireplaces in the kitchen and it was just such an important element of like beating those cold dark winters and um, i just got so used to having the fires on all the time so when robin and steven and i came to sit down and design the house you know i said i'd love to have if, if it's possible i'd love to have a fireplace in the kitchen and then and then bridget and i kind of came up with this really cool this fluted sort of fireplace facade reminds me of the fireplace facade in Nate Burkus and Jeremiah Brent's New York City townhome. They no longer live there, but it was, I believe, in their bedroom sitting area. I'll link a little side by side of those two photos here, but such a beautiful and sort of art deco design element and a great way. You could even DIY something like that. It's nice to see a little bit of texture to break up all this white and give the room a little bit more depth and texture. This fluting with plaster which I I found on something similar on Find my it on Pinterest, Pinterest. <laughs> and then I was like <laughs> I think this would be such a nice way to finish the wall instead of just having some dry Much wall and then Bridget wall. found these amazing lights that are just so beautiful I like 
like that little marble mortar and pestle. And then this I love particularly. This is like <laughs> my dream. Side note, her marble necklace, marble. Uh, where, where is that from and, and can I afford it? <laughs> it's gorgeous. This also was like a dream come true for me to have these particular blue plates like on Oh, on I know this designer. Plates, you know, that have a beautiful pattern. You want to see them and usually they're just stacked in the cupboard. So we did this plate wall. I don't remember if she mentioned it, but is that a stone countertop, like a quartz? Or are we looking at a marble here? It's definitely a little bit more subtle than we're seeing these bold, wild, organic marbles lately in a lot of homes. This almost looks like it could be a polished cement product. It's it's actually really, really pretty. There was a fight between Matt, the contractor, and Steven about whether this would be actually like usable and workable. Uh, it's it's this a little bit different to have a ladder. The woman that I bought my house in from in Los kitchen. Angeles, Windsor Smith, another designer, I loved how in different rooms she completely changes floors. And I think it's such a nice way to offer a distinct personality to a room. It's kind of a freeing thing to be told by a designer. You can do completely different floorings in different spaces. You don't have to try to achieve this all over flooring look, especially if you're in an older home like we are and you're trying to renovate, it can get a little frustrating sometimes if one room has great floors and another room doesn't and you wish that they were all the same, like a new build. This is a great example of a new build that you know you really see a lot of variation in the floors. That's kind of exciting. Different stains, different layouts of the hardwood, different tile options. It is a kind of a subtle way to make rooms feel separate from each other. I'm not afraid of changing floors as you'll see as we go I through. I like that. I feel very inspired by that. Okay, here comes the bold marble that I've been craving. Look at that. I mean, come on. That bar is insane. So this is the living room. It's kind of bonkers. <laughs> a little bit. In the best way, I think. So we've got a custom, very curvilinear sofa that is very on trend right now. We have talked so much about curvilinear furniture. These accent chairs, they're so mid-century or like postmodern or just something. I, I'm not familiar with this particular design. If you are, jump in, let me know, teach me something in the comments. They look almost like folded up pieces of paper covered in boot clay, I'm not sure. And uh, I'm gonna rag on something here though. I, I love the marble bar. I'm totally into it with this neutral curvilinear custom U-shaped sofa. I can do the stools, the airy rug is amazing, the light fixtures. No, not for me anyway. They look like basement wires hanging. They, I don't know, it's just kind of strange. I see where they're going with this. I'm just not going with them. The globe pendants, uh, they're good, I just, they're kind of haphazard, they're all over, it's trying to be artistic or something, and it just, for me, it's coming off sort of like blinky light in the basement. I really wanted it to be a bit of a showstopper. I had this swing in a different house, and the original swing we lost in the fire, but I really had a vision of having this swing there, which I lie in it all the time. I mean, I, I mean, go if there and I read. I mean, it's a functional piece of furniture, and she loves it, or whatever. And it's become one of my favorite spots. I wouldn't put a Lights, swing daybed in my living room, Adam but his yeah. amazing lighting designers, I'm sure you know. And I kind of just sent her drawings of the room, and I said, just do whatever. I do respect that she worked with a lighting designer to she design these. Insanely I guess beautiful. for me, it's just not a style so I would use in our home, much. but... Paradise City. I think it's somehow inspired by Guns N' Roses. Yeah, it's maybe not. So I'm not inspired cool. by Guns N' so Roses. Nice <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, such an amazing artist like Lindsay. Of course, she's named she Lindsay. <laughs> like, we made no edits. I just said, do it. It's like the jewelry for the living room. I think with lighting, you just have to kind of this follow the beat of your own is... drum. I, again, I found this, <laughs> I found the inspiration on, on the internet. I asked Stephen and Robin if there was a way that we could kind of take the idea but make it different and unique and also slightly more traditional to fit in with those more traditional. I, I would do house. that all day long in our home. And it's so they gorgeous. Drew this beautiful thing. And then Bridget that antique and I went brass to the on the faucet. And we were kind of like wandering around. We didn't know what material we were going to choose, and we were looking at some quartzes and some different marbles. And then we both 
came from different directions and like saw this and fell in love with it at the same time. I don't remember where I first saw this couch, but I knew that I wanted it for this house when I saw it. There's something almost like 70s. Very 70s that. inspired, especially and the connection the between the two pieces. Uses. Even though we just kind of moved in, we were in this room a lot. And, and I kind of love that there's no throw pillows. I am a former throw pillow addict. I still love a good throw pillow, but I don't need 55 of them like maybe I used to. And I think in general, I like a little bit more minimalism in the styling. There's no books on the table. There's no little stacks of styling anywhere. She's really gone for a little bit more postmodern, very minimal. Very, a lot of this is very trendy. I'm going to say that because of all this sort of 70s inspiration. I, I mean, I'm drawn to it because I like a lot of those design elements, but I'm interested to see if some of this is going to feel dated in the future. I'm not sure. Okay, this is kind of the most incredible thing of the house. I feel like it's a spa. Like she has her own spa. I mean, she is Gwyneth Paltrow. Are we surprised? It's a bit of a spa. It's a bit of a spa. It's a big of a spa. Understatement. Understatement. Under understatement. You know, I'm into wellness. Those shower heads are amazing. Maybe I can write it off as a business expense then. Okay, side note, she wore the loudest possible bracelet for this shoot. Maybe I can write it off as a business expense then. And can you hear it like jingling through this entire video? I've been trying to ignore it. And she occasionally you'll notice in this video, she holds the bracelet while she's talking. I almost wonder if the AD team was like, you're going to have to hold that thing, honey, because we can't hear you. <laughs> just like a forever, forever home and what would be the few things that are just so special and that, you know, you could use when you're much older. And so we were kind of thinking it would be amazing to have a real spa. And there's one in Paris called Bain de la Marais. Very Paris inspired. That tile reminds me of a restaurant that I went to in Paris. It's amazing tiles, they're handmade, and I love all the details that they had done and the color, and it's very calming in here. Rich people truly are living a different lifestyle than we are. I just designed these for waterworks. It's part of their Atlas collection, and it's beautiful. It's like this kind of industrial design and the unlacquered brass that we have as a theme. I love unlacquered brass. There's a lot of it throughout this home, and it definitely has that sort of age and patina over time. I come in here every day. I use it all the time. I mean, who wouldn't? <laughs> If she has enough money to make this and she doesn't have enough money to take some time off to enjoy it, I would be concerned about her. Another custom sofa. Oh my gosh, that swing is out of control. <laughs> oh my gosh, I guess that's all we get. No bedrooms. That was a really fast one, you guys. Well, AD, thank you so much for stopping by. It was a real pleasure to have you. Oh, wow. <laughs> I can't believe it's over already. That was so quick. Well, that concludes the very exciting Gwyneth Paltrow home tour. There were a lot of interesting elements in this home from natural stone, texture, neutral tones, hanging day bed. Not for me. I would not be doing that hanging day bed thing, but apparently she uses it all the time. Would you do that in your home? The other thing I'm interested in too is the ladder in the kitchen. I don't know, but I guess if you have cabinets that high, you have to have an easy way to access them. So library kitchen it is, I suppose. I guess my favorite space was the entry. I loved how French inspired it was. And I really loved the fireplace facades in both the dining room and the entry. I thought they were absolutely stunning. As always, these were my opinions, so don't forget to share yours in the comments down below. Like and subscribe for more interior design and home decor tips. And let me know if there's any other house tours you'd like to see next in this series. Until next time, take a walk through Alicia Keys and Swizz Beats' fabulous modernist home. I'll also leave my list of interior design trends for 2022. Have a great week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye my friends.